What's the one U.S. state you absolutely will never step foot in and why? Story 1. I hope to never set foot in Texas. Seems like a racism, homophobia nightmare, and many people open carry, so it would be prohibitively dangerous to go there for me. Also, the state seems like it has dog shit infrastructure, despite receiving so much federal aid. Story 2. Any state north of the Mason-Dixon line in winter. I broke my leg in Texas the day before an ice storm in 22, and that was a cold that lasted for three days. I won't have any bones left if I end up somewhere with ice for longer than that. Story 3, California and Texas. Politics in both will keep me from ever going anywhere near either. It's kind of funny because I live in a state that does the same shit as one and lived in a state that does the same shit as the other, Illinois and Florida, but neither are as extreme with their nonsense. In reality, there's only a handful of states I'm willing to live in, and the only reason I ever come back to Illinois is because I'm from here. Winters here can fuck off even if this last one wasn't bad. I'll probably end up back in Florida at some point, just not in Jacksonville. Story 4. Just one? Okay. California. It's one giant skid row. Nobody can afford to live there anymore. It supposedly has the second or third strictest laws, and two 17-year-olds can be arrested for the statutory rape of the other. Also, earthquakes terrify me. My answer would be Georgia, whose various laws are so ridiculously strict I would never set foot there if I could help it but I sometimes drive through it on the way to visit family. Georgia can be nuked for all I care, though. Story 5. Only one state? Hard to say. Oklahoma made me not want to bother with Kansas or Nebraska. I have to imagine that Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi are like the FL Panhandle or Tennessee, just without the infrastructure or culture. Story 6. Considering I want to visit not just all 50 states, but all 3,000-plus counties and equivalents, I'll set foot in every state at some point. That said... Arkansas is probably the saddest state I've been to, and this is coming from someone who calls Louisiana home. Little Rock especially is just depressing. It's run down, and you can't escape the influences from the Clinton and Walton families, and somehow Pine Bluff is worse from what I've been told. Story 7. I, Florida. I am a writer of adult literature, asexual, anime fan, furry, and everything that DeSantos think is wrong with this country. Why should I be in a state that I am not welcome in? Also, half the conservatives think I am a pedophile because I am asexual, which makes zero sense. How does a person with no sex drive be attracted to kids when I have no attraction to anyone? Story 8. Haven't been to many states. Grew up in Ms., and I've been to pretty much every southern state and Nevada. I'm open to going anywhere because I'm not closed-minded. Every state has its own pros and cons, but if I had to choose one, it would probably be Oregon. I've just heard their drug problem is way out of control. Story 9. I love United States of America. I've been in many, many states, and I don't think I want to there's a state that I hate, because mainly they were all fun. I lived in the states back in the day I had a job installing electronic locks for hotels in the early 2000s, traveling and sending postcards back home. Story 10. I can't even barely afford to live in my own state, much less travel to another one. But right now, I wouldn't go to Texas. Too much ass-backwards politics and the entire our state is a culture mentality by a certain portion of its citizens is unappealing. Story 11. So, I live in Florida and I am a soccer referee trying to ref in every state. If I can't claim Florida as the worst state, I would say out of the states that I have remaining, I am not looking forward to is Mississippi. Everything about that state makes me think I am going to get a staph infection. It's poor... Dirty, the food is apparently awful, and there is absolutely nothing to do there. When a state is Republican-controlled for as long as Mississippi has, it tends to be the shithole of the country. If I am not mistaken, it's almost statistically last in every category. Story 12. I will never want to even be near Idaho. About ten years ago, a friend, white male, and I, black male, embarked on a road trip to the Midwest from California for a friend's wedding. We were in Idaho all of 15 minutes when we were pulled over by their HWI patrol. They administered a sobriety test by having us tilt our heads back with our eyes closed. They claimed that eye movements indicated we had been using drugs. With no further evidence, I was charged with a DUI and amphetamine use, even though I've never used drugs. They searched our car and found nothing but claimed I was admitting guilt by how I was standing W slash my hands together. I spent a year in their county jail fighting the case. When going to arraignment, their DA suggested my bail be set at 50K. I could have easily made bail, but the judge set my bail for 500K. My friend spent three months in custody, even though they found weed in his bag, and he had an extensive criminal record. His mother was an attorney in his home state, and she hired him the best lawyer in the area we were in. My family couldn't afford a lawyer, so my friend gave me all of his notes from his lawyer to give to my public defender, so we would be given the same level of legal representation. 
My public defender refused to do anything I asked. So while my friend was going home, I was being held. I had never been in any trouble with the legal system, not until my family was able to come up with 15K to pay the same lawyer my friend had, was I able to get proper representation and gain my freedom. Prior to that, I spent every day being threatened by Latino gang members and white supremacists as the only black personal in my pod. I was released to return in five months for sentencing. When I returned and had to spend a couple days in Idaho, I was terrified to even leave my hotel for anything as I didn't want to be attacked by the racist residents of the town nor get harassed by the police. Fuck Idaho. Story 13. I hope I never have to set foot in Texas again, maybe Florida, but I'll probably have to go at some point at least one more time in my life. But that state sucks too. This isn't new or because of Trump. I wrote those states off years ago after some terrible trips. There's some good parts of each state, but they are overrun by right-wing policies. And I trust being in their legal jurisdiction as much as I would being in Venezuela. Story 14. Alabama. Because I don't want to risk ending up in prison over the plant I've taken every day for my mental health for the past 10 years that's legal in more than 40 U.S. states and served in hundreds of tea bars throughout Florida. Story 15. None of them? Why would you even say or adhere to something as ignorant as that? Even if a state doesn't have laws that you agree with, staying in your own echo chamber of states' politics isn't helping anyone. It's best to travel and visit as many places as you possibly can, in my opinion. It might even change your opinion, or at least give you a ton of relevant nuance. For example, in a West Coast, raised blue, progressive, never thought I'd visit Texas, the South, but they are literally amazing places. It definitely changed my view on Texas as much as I disagree with their politics. I am better for going there and experiencing that culture in person. Story 16. Florida, I'm trans and have an X gender marker. I could have put an F, but fuck the government. The less info I can give them, the better. In that state, if the gender marker doesn't match your sex assigned at birth, you can be charged with having false documents. That and their bathroom ban. Can't legally use the woman's room, but I pass too well to use the men's room. Story 17. I'll preface this by saying I lean socially liberal and politically despise the two-party system and think it's designed to divide the country. There is a not a single state I'd say I'll never put a foot in. What we seem to forget dividing states into red or blue states is that they still have Americans living there that are the opposite political color that the state is. I moved from NY to Florida a few years ago. Where I grew up and lived in NY had a large portion of racist white people. Where I moved to Florida is super diverse and fits my socially liberal vibes perfectly, St. Petersburg. If I based my opinions on moving based off news articles or Reddit posts, I would have never considered moving there. Moving here has really helped me grow as a person. Story 18. I've been lucky enough to travel around most of the country, more than once. If I have to go through the South, I stick to the Gulf Coast, which is fantastic, and drive as fast as I can if I have to venture deeper into the state. I've only ever been threatened with a gun once in my life, and it was in Alabama or Georgia, can't remember which. It was the most ridiculously stereotypical story involving me taking a wrong turn. It would have been funny if my wife and kids weren't there and terrified. Florida is interesting. All around the edges is paradise. But there's also an underlying bitterness towards outsiders when you hit certain spots. Very understandable, though. Story 19. Fuck Texas. So utterly and completely. I've only ever been there because I've had to be there, and it's absolutely miserable every time I go. It's like an entire state filled with either empty space or suburbs of varying wealth with zero actual culture. And that famous Texas barbecue fucking sucks. Story 20, Hawaii, California, and Nevada. California because it's a state of traffic and people are just weird. Plus it's stupid expensive. Nevada because most of it is desert and Vegas isn't any place I'd ever go to. Hawaii because what it's become is a tourist trap. And the interesting parts that the natives had have been swindled or stolen. Florida is a close second because I already lived there. And between the snowbirds trying to kill you, the tourists, and the retirees, there are a lot of whack jobs who only vote one way, just because. Story 21. I will never go back to Texas. It was the most controlled, freedom-hating, dystopian place I'd ever been in my life. Cops and private security everywhere. Weed is illegal. Certain books are banned and the barbecue sucks. That's why everyone from there comes to Arkansas. I'm convinced that nobody actually lives in Texas. They all just live in Arkansas and have Texas license plates. Story 22. The state's problems are generated by a small, loud subset of people pushing their own agenda. The subsets are actively working against the best interests of the majority of the people in that state. 
I'm idealistic and I think that people want to be good people. The ways of going about being a good person have been hijacked by religious and conservative fundamentalists driven to taking away people's rights in the name of their twisted view of life. Story 23. New York also is becoming horrible, and I live in New York, so it's from experience, and that's just because crime is just going through the roof. I just bought a Pew Pew because I just don't didn't feel safe anymore. But I mean, there's so much just senseless crime in New York. People getting shot in the head for no reason, people trying to rob. And if they don't get what they want, they shoot them. It's, it's horrible. It's reminding me of New York before Giuliani. That's where we're headed to even coming into Long Island now. Story 24. I've actually had the honor of being able to set foot in every U.S. state. I know that there are several of them that if I had the opportunity, I would never set foot in them again. One is California. I will catch flack for this one, but I'm oh, the bigger cities are just so dirty and smoggy. And if you want to be able to not breathe smog, you basically have to go to the middle of nowhere to find it. I didn't like Arkansas either. With that state, it honestly was the nosy Nellies that I ran into. Might be different in some of the state, but I just got this feeling I was being judged by them because I was not from there. I try and need easy to get along with, but they tested my patience. Ohio is another place I don't want to go back to. Swear they are all crazy there. Like Houston, Texas. But those are really the only places so far I wouldn't go back to. Story 25, Utah. I have watched so many true crime documentaries, and I swear Utah and California are top two states with the weirdest, most awful crimes. California. I understand because it has the biggest population, but Utah has no excuse. Gary Ridgway, Elizabeth Smart, Ted Bundy, the boxcar killer, Joseph Paul Franklin. Elizabeth Smart's case alone is enough for me to steer clear. Story 26, West Virginia. I have a good friend who went there with his girlfriend. They said the places they went were beautiful, but literally everywhere he went, he was treated like shit because he's part Mexican. I thought he was exaggerating, but he said literally everyone was an asshole or told him he needed to leave. The guy is friendly as can be. Seems like anyone he meets anywhere else he can just talk with and become friends with. He started sending his wife into stores and gas stations. She's white, and they were polite and normal with her. Story 27. I've seen a few people mention it, but as someone born and raised and still living in Mississippi, I cannot fucking wait to move somewhere else. It's so boring here. Nothing to do except going bowling or to the movies. The coastal area is not really as nice as some people try to make themselves believe. Arguably, the nicest area in Mississippi still has crime problems, roads that never get fixed, ugly landscaping, barely any sidewalks. It's nothing but highways through cities with terrible traffic flow. It's like that one meme where it shows a stereotypical city in the U.S. with a million fast food joints and a fucking six-lane highway going down the middle with a million potholes and cracks in the road. There's nothing redeeming about living here. Story 28, California. Moved from Alaska to Oklahoma in 2015 and flying isn't my favorite thing. My doctor gave me a little sample pack of Valium so that I could easily sleep on the red-eye segment of my flight. I arrive in California, and TSA finds my single pill in a small blister pack and detain me for much too long, asking me the dumbest questions. Who gave you this? Where's your prescription? Long story short, I left LAX without my pill and make it to my destination. A couple of months later, my dad gets a letter for me from the California court system. I had apparently missed court for a single pill that was given to me by a doctor. I did have the little sheet with all the drug information along with my other medications, and I showed them this when I was stopped. It even had my name on it and a list of refills I got that day. I should also mention that while I was traversing LAX in the middle of the night, I was in an oddly empty corridor on the way to my terminal. Turning the corner, I was shocked to see a transgender individual intravenously injecting something in a corner. Fucking LA. Got on my plane. The morale of my story is that you can shoot up at the airport in L.A., and it's even on to use the bathroom in the street. But you better not have any prescribed medications at the airport. I will never go back to California. Story 29. All of them. With the gun violence and super polarizing politics. Hard skip. Doesn't look like a spot I'd want to vacation in. Too much traffic. Too many idiots on the street doing TikTok stuff. Too many idiots carrying guns to protect their other guns. Sufficient but expensive Heath care and so many mental health problems stemming from drugs or homelessness. Super hard pass. Story 30. If I ever have to step foot in Oklahoma again, I'll be pissed. Racist ass pieces of shits here. I have to warn my own troops about places and towns. One of the city council members got outed as part of the KKK. I'm a Nupiak, but get confused as a Hispanic and fuck. I hate these people. City official was telling me how much he hates gays. I am gay. Heard from another person that he wouldn't participate in the parade if the LGBT were in it, as he'd want to run them over. 
I stopped going to the city meetings. I get having good public relations between the city and the military base, but I don't feel safe attending there anymore as I'm always attending by myself. If there's an emergency response that needs to happen, fine, gotta focus on the response. But I don't care enough about the training or the networking more than my own well-being or my troops. Wearing the uniform keeps me somewhat safe. But what about when I'm not? How about if I never had put on the uniform at all? Fuck you Oklahomans that are bigoted pieces of shits. Story 31, Texas. After the last few years, I had to decide that even if when my Texas father dies, I can't, as a woman, chance being in Texas when Gilead is in full control. My dad has bad health. If his passing happens, I plan to go to the border closest to him and mourn. I cannot believe I got to see the height and fall of freedom for women in America. Many of my family will not respect my decision. I will likely lose most of my family that day. I already cry about it. So sad. Story 32. I've gone on lots of road trips around the U.S. and hit, I think, 30 states. I am a pretty obvious lesbian and have done 95% of these trips solo. Only two places have I felt incredibly uneasy and like I needed to skedaddle. Rumsey, California, rural northern CA, and a dairy queen on the outskirts of Austin, Texas in farm country. Should add I grew up in an extremely rural farming part of the country and am typically pretty comfortable in these types of places, but not those two. Story 33, T. Virginia. They're still pissed at my state for never returning the 28th Virginia Colors, a Confederate battle flag captured in day two of the Battle of Gettysburg by an outnumbered 1st Minnesota Infantry Regiment. With just over 200 soldiers, the 1st Minnesota charged a Confederate brigade of 1,200 and secured the Union's position until reinforcements arrived. Less than 50 Minnesota infantrymen survived. Their governor will ask for it back every now and then, and our governor always says no. Story 34. I'd be fine if I never set foot in Texas again for the rest of my life. I think it's a living representation of the this is fine meme, except the dog is wearing a cowboy hat and continues to put up Texas state flags on his burning walls. As his house is being immolated, he's simultaneously freezing because the unregulated power grid failed again, and he's telling all the other houses on his block that they're doing it wrong because their houses aren't on fire. Story 35. I've been in every state except Hawaii, mostly for work. I've never had a worse experience than that of Jackson, Mississippi. I'm a white male. The place is, by an extreme margin, the most racist place I've ever been. Four times in one week, other white men, complete strangers to me, initiated conversation with incredibly racist statements, as if they were looking for validation. If there is a place in the U.S. with a KKK, it's Jackson, Mississippi. On a happier note, I had a long-running personal poll of happiness running. I'd ask people, so, how do you like living here? The most common response was something along the lines of meh. It has its pros and cons. It's okay overall, with two exceptions, NYC and Minneapolis. Both got enthusiastic responses along the lines of, I can't imagine living anywhere else. NYC denizens explained how it was 24-7 and variety and multicultural. Minneapolis residents loved how it was an urban area with nice people and diversity. There's a life lesson about happiness and prejudice in there somewhere. Story 36. I might step foot in it because I still have family there, but I will never become a California resident again, even though I grew up there and have had people constantly ask me when I will move back. I have lived in four different states since I left, and I have had no problem leaving and registering my car. I have gone from one state to the other by just going to the DMV, showing that I'm now a resident, and bam. My car is registered and the other state fucks off and leaves me alone. California? Constant registration renewal notices to my East Coast address. I call up, on hold for hours, and explain I have lived and registered in multiple different states. Then the attitude about needing to fill out some form. No, I will not fill out the form. The other states I've lived in don't need a form. They see that I'm registered in another state and they leave me alone. If they can do it, California can too. I know I'm being stubborn and ridiculous at this point, but I don't care. Story 37. I can't pick just one. Each election cycle, my list gets longer. I'm not letting average, run-of-the-mill policy differences affect my opinion of entire states. But when I start seeing legislature that criminalizes and ostracizes very specific subsets of our population, fuck that state not getting a goddamn penny of my tourist dollars. Lord knows the backwoods piles of shit are already collecting enough of my tax dollars. 